In today's video, I'm gonna break down this commercial I shot solo across three different locations in Tokyo. a really simple campaign I shot for the streetwear brand Bape and this was shot across three different locations in Tokyo. The first location was in a very small bamboo forest actually in the southern part of Tokyo in an area called Meguro. The second was shot around Tokyo Tower in an area close to Daimon Station. And the third section was shot on a blue bridge in the northern part of Tokyo near Asakusa. It was actually right across the water in that general area. So I'm just gonna simply talk scene by scene through this video and the gear and techniques used. So this first intro, I actually wanted to loop with the endings. So the ending I whipped down. This first intro, I made sure that I was whipping in. I actually, for this video, used only the Sony FX3 system. And for this particular shot, I used the Laowa 10 millimeter full frame lens. It's an autofocus f2.8 lens. And all I did for this shot was handheld whip down. And I did it a couple different times. And then I had this extra scene where I actually did a couple different movements. If you can tell here, the first one, I did a couple whip down movements and then I asked Enzo, our model today, to just push the camera to the side as a transition. I like to do this a couple different times. And for the third clip coming up here, I actually did a different movement. I whipped up. I just wanted to give myself some variation in the edit afterwards in case the whip down transition didn't work. I actually did this transition in a couple different locations. This whip down I did here on a bridge. And I just do that sometimes. I do different locations just in case I don't like the way it looks in the edit. That gives me some variable options later when I want to change things. This next scene, again, I'm shooting on the 10 mil and I'm just, again, handheld. This time, I think I have active stabilization on the FX3, which is a very handy tool when you're shooting handheld small rigs. Here you can see the light spilling behind Enzo. And I just wanted to capture him covering the light. So I directed him just to walk down the stairs. And as he walked down the stairs, I just slowly moved my camera towards him and tried to track the shoes at the very end, just to give myself a little bit of variation and just some cutscenes that I could use in the edit. Again, for these sorts of shots, trying to keep yourself steady, nice and low. And as he's walking towards me, I'm pushing in to give you some sort of dynamic movement. This second clip, again, I'm just playing with the light here. As you can see, the light is spilling in and it's backlighting him. And I have my aperture, I think around 2.8, maybe four. And again, I'm just pushing in here and trying to play with the light and also get some cool detailed shots of the shoes. Again, this is a shoe commercial. So I wanna make sure that I'm showing plenty detailed shots of the shoes and also playing with the light, making sure it looks cool. So here I'm just pushing in, giving myself a couple different movement types. You can, you can even see here my shoe. This is how wide the lens is. My shoe per personally here, and then I'm pushing in and, and trying to get a couple rotation movements. I like this where as I'm rotating around, the light stops and then peeks out behind him. And that gives you a cool, cool little transition cut scene that you can use in an edit. I don't think I use it particularly in this edit, but uh, it gives you some variation. Next scene, again, this is the 10 mil. I'm just pushing in handheld once more, trying to get a couple different movements. As you can see here, I just whipped up and you'll see me do this a lot in these scenes. This just gives me an extra added location to cut to in the edit. If I don't want to use the motion scene, I don't have to, but it gives me the option later. Here you can just see me. I'm just making sure that the logo here is uh, is visible. And what I asked him to do here was extend his arm. And here I'm just asking him to fix his sleeve as I'm pushing in and out with my camera. It just gives you a little dynamic movement instead of just having him stand there and stare at the camera or stare off into the distance. After this, I think I switched down to his shoes and got a couple detailed shots of his shoes here. And rather than get, let's say like 10 cuts of the exact same movement, I try to get like three, maybe four of that same movement. And then I just cut. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And I just move on to my next shot because I'd rather have more variation of different angles rather than just having one shot 
and then not having enough footage later in the edit to cut to. Again, I'm just doing some dynamic movement stuff here. Another handheld shot, I'm just playing around. The, the light was so beautiful this morning that I just wanted to play around with how it spills out. The lens flares are crazy on this lens. And these shots, I just had Enzo, I just told him to stand confidently and fix his shoulder, his, his jacket a little bit. And as he's doing that, I'm just having him do it continuously and I'm moving as well. It gives me a couple extra cuts. This next shot's a really basic shot. I'm stationary, slightly panning a little bit with him. And this is actually on the G Master 24 millimeter F1.4 lens. And I've got a variable ND filter on the front, the Peter McKellen two to five. This gives me that nice depth of field, but also as he comes across, there's a nice focus on him. It tracks focus super fast. The autofocus on the Sony systems are so good, especially in low light that Honestly, you can just let it roll and you get some really good stuff. At the end here, I just follow him a little bit. Again, for a little cutscene that I might use, but I actually didn't end up using. This next scene is the main sort of transition between the worlds that I had in my head. I didn't have this storyboarded out, but I really had an idea of what I wanted to do. I actually have a tutorial on this exact transition. I'll link it here, here. But if I just play this through here, So if I show you the timeline on this particular transition, you'll see that what I have is basically a timeline of basically your speed ramping between each pose. And the idea was between the speed ramps, I would go ahead and shoot a similar movement for each location. And between the speed ramps, I would actually cut. So it'd be a, a speed ramp and almost same location, same movement, but the background would change. And I think it came out really cool. It was really an experiment. I wasn't sure how it was gonna come out. And thankfully, uh, it came out really cool. This is, this is just a long form, just take of what this actual footage looks like before I speed ramp in. I've got this on a gimbal. For this, I have the DJ RS3 Pro, and I have the, the again, the FX3 with the Laowa 10 mil. And I'm just moving between different poses. I kind of had in my head an idea of, I wanna go wide, tight, down low left, mid right, wide again, and then tight. And I kind of had that mapped out in my head. And honestly, I just played around with what I thought looked cool. And the key here for these are to just maintain a constant speed. Just pause a little bit in each location move around at a very standard steady pace that way in the speed ramp you don't have to do too much it's just speeding up over the, the actual moving parts and then adding a little motion blur some RS, rsmb and that'll really spice up everything this next section here i have the speed ramp cutting from the green to the red and then afterwards i have this effect where it almost looks like the speed ramp is being caught by Enzo. So to show you this, this, the raw clips, again, I'm just doing this speed ramp thing, the same motion this time with the Tokyo Tower in the background. This is our second location. All I'm doing is I'm just coming across and getting the same, kind of not exact same, because I think I forgot what the exact motion was, but I'm just coming across doing similar motions. So that gives me an opportunity to cut across in the actual speed ramp. And then when it actually speeds into the hand catch, I've got it up and I don't even know what percentage this, what percentage is this? This is what, 3000%? Over four or five frames, I go from 100% to 3000%. And it's a really quick speed ramp. I found that to be honest, speed ramping over five frames, four or five frames is kind of the sweet spot for the stuff that I like to do. This one I'm just having him pose, but the second one, I actually have a handheld whip where I just have Enzo have his hand out and I physically move the camera into his hand and then I take a step back. And so that gives you a dynamic additional moment where you could transition into his hand and then I step back. These sorts of clips, it's nice to have or direct your model. Just have your hand really firm. And so you do the rest of the movement. You don't want them to, to really have to like consciously push too hard or do anything too difficult. You do most of the movement with your motion and just have them stay firm and be very clear in your direction. So I had him have his hand out. I said, as soon as I hit your hand, I'll take a step back. Just lower your hand as soon as you catch it. So that's what happened here. 
And that's the clip I ended up using. This next clip here is actually the same clip, but there was this beautiful pool of light. I just had Enzo step around a little bit, just had him told him to rotate a little bit. And I just came in and, and did a little handheld movement here. I think I had the active stabilization again on this one. I like these little cutscenes where you have the model, he's looking, but basically you just want them to to be dynamic. And when you're when you're directing somebody, the worst thing you can do is tell them just be dynamic. Give them clear instructions. So I was like, look at the target tower and then look at the camera. So I said, three, two, one, and on one, he just looks at me. So he has one thing he has to do and the rest of it, I can control in the actual camera framing. This next scene here is on the gimbal again. This time I have it on the PTF mode, which is like it keeps the horizon stable and you can kind of tilt up or down using your own handheld movements. I'm just having him walk at a constant pace and I'm just walking with him so I can get both the toe guitar in the background and him. And then I'm just giving myself a little extra. I didn't even use the second part in the actual edit. Just cool to get another different movement style. You can see here, I told him to look around, like look to his left. This is actually in the actual final edit, I cut here into this tighter shot, or this wider shot actually, sorry. This is a different shot. As you can see, this one's medium. Then I wanted a full body as well, because obviously it's a shoe commercial. I want to make sure I get the shoes in here. Exact same movement though, really exact same movement. It works because it's such a wide lens. This 10 mil is amazing. This next scene, this is, again, you can tell, I mean, if you've been to Tokyo or been to Asakusa, you know where this is. This is like the bridge right next to, to the main area. This one, I, in my head, I did the same FPV thing across all three locations, but I also thought maybe I could, and this came about during the shoot. I thought I could transition this to the next location by shooting the same style of shot. So I shot almost the exact same shot here. And here I'm just rotating around. Again, this is on the gimbal, the GIS RS3. At the end here, I'm just whipping away with the gimbal. In my head, I always like to add movement at the end of clips or at the beginning of clips to cut to. This again is the FPV raw footage. So the blues are just so brilliant here. So I really wanted to capture that. So I started wide, came in medium, came in tight again, again, a lot of times I like to backlight on video. It just gives you a little bit more dynamic edge to your video. And you can just, with the dynamic range on, on 10 bit and, and it's just easy to, to work with backlight situations rather than have super harsh front lit subjects. This is on the FPV mode as well. I was just getting, trying to get some B shots. I didn't use that shot. I like that shot. Um, I just started in the shoe here, came out wide. This is a cool pose I had him do, just kind of sitting here with one leg on, one leg back, crossing, and then getting your, your blues right here on the pole. It was pretty cool. This is just a handheld shot. I'm, I would say I'm rolling most of the time when I'm shooting. Even if it's just like little moments, you never know what you might use, especially when you're solo shooting. I always like to shoot more than I need, but not like, not as in like shoot every scene 10 times. I like to shoot a lot of different scenes two or three times. So this is kind of what I did here. I did it three or four times. As you can see here, I'm, that was me in the, the camo pants right there. I'm just whipping down after I get a good uh, kind of focus scene. This one, I wanted the logo and whip down. Let me just show you that one more time. Pushing in, this is all handheld. Whipping down, whipping down. And giving myself a little bit of more, one tighter shot, just in case I need it, in case I wanted to end like on a, on a logo or something. And that's it. So this was shot all on available natural light. There was no modifiers attached. I just had the ND filter. This was shot on two lenses and it was shot all by myself. I had Jojo assisting me for photos. I actually shot photos for the campaign as well. But for the video, it was just me and the model working around. I think the key here is the brilliant colors in the backgrounds that really add to 
the, the shoe color and also the model's fits. In terms of pre-production, we were very particular in the location selections, but for the shots, I kind of had a general idea of what I wanted. I've shot these sort of campaigns so often that I know the various different shots that I need. And because there's no like specific shot list that was required from the client, I wasn't too worried about what I needed to shoot. I obviously know that I need tights of the actual details of the shoes some wides and obviously some environmental shots. For these sort of short campaigns, you obviously want to focus on the shoe, but the environment is what makes the video so interesting. So just getting a good combination of both and giving yourself a lot of room in the edit to play with the various focal lengths and the various shot styles will give you a lot of joy when you're shooting. If you have any questions on anything else in this video, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll try to get to you. As always, appreciate you sticking to the very end. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. And I'll see you guys in the next one.